Welcome, everybody. It is the second episode of Super Shares presented by Q. Now, we have a fantastic ed tech coach, fantastic educator, and a fantastic friend of mine, Adam Juarez. Adam, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Adam Juarez. I'm a tech integration coach for grade 612 at Cutler Orosi Joint Univer uh, Unified School District out in uh, rural Tulare County. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's great to be here. Good to see you, Joe. It's been a it's been an odd year, um, but you know what? I'm making the best out of it. Um, on a side note, I got my uh, my wife and I are co-authoring a book. It's going to be out this fall, so keep keep uh, keep an eye out. We're putting the finishing touches on it as we speak. Yeah, I can't wait for that. But I mean, you you two are an amazing tandem of coaches. You have a really great mindset of how to get teachers engaged and enthralled with utilizing technology in the classroom. And um, I can't wait to read it. I, and I can't wait for others to read it to get as excited about coaching other teachers as you and Catherine are. It's just a really amazing thing. Now, Adam, thank you for being here on the episode. We want to make sure that we are preparing and sharing with all the educators out there who are looking towards the fall. And do you know why we're doing this? We're doing this because we want to eliminate fears. We want to eliminate anything because as we all know, we don't know what's coming except fall is coming. Fall is coming down the pipe. It's going to be here faster than we know it. In fact, many teachers are going to be going back to the classroom or at least back to their campuses or back to something next week and the week after. What do you, Adam, have to share with us? Some strategies, some tools, something that can help teachers start off the school year strong and in a very effective technology mode. Uh, my first piece of advice is to, uh, you know what, don't get, don't, don't overwhelm yourself. Start, start with one thing, get comfortable with it, and then move on to the next thing. Uh, on my website, techcoachwaters.com, um, I have a whole distance learning page that uh, I developed during the initial shutdown, all those resources are free, and there are simple, easy ways for you to get started with the bare bones basics. There's nothing fancy um, about what, what I'm uh, what I'm doing here. It's how you get started using a variety of tools, such as Google Classroom, Flipgrid, to just to name a few. Um, one of my pet projects that I kind of developed during this time that definitely uh, a lot of teachers are, I, I don't know if they, if they thought of it this way. Uh, it's called my phone friendly uh, lesson design, um, and it takes into consideration that. A lot of kids, their only access to the internet at home is through their cell phone. And how can you design lessons that can be done on the phone and don't require um, a, a, a Chromebook or a, or a Mac or a PC? So to take into consideration those kids. So that, that's definitely something I would definitely recommend people checking out. I know I, people have been reaching out to me to train people on that. I, it just came, kind of came out of nowhere. I did it for um, CVQ um, back, in, back in May. And it surprisingly, it was, it was a hit. So definitely that's something I really encourage people to take into consideration those kids who can only access the internet through their phones. Now, what are some really good tools or strategies or lessons that you can share with us um, about these phone-friendly lesson designs? What are, what are some things that teachers can do, can, can utilize the, the, uh, the uh, devices in the pockets of their students? What are some things, activities, that you can share with us that they can start doing next week, tomorrow, now, as soon as they're done listening to this episode? Well, something real simple that people forget. They, they think, oh, yeah, using technology, using a phone, that paper and pencil goes out the window. That couldn't be further from the truth because using that, the, uh, the Google Classroom app on, on, a, <clears throat> on, your, on your Android, your iPhone, your iPad, even a Chromebook, you can take pictures of your work and submit them, as, and submit them to assignments in Google Classroom. A lot of people forget that. Uh, so the don't throw the handwritten work out yet. For me, people who know me know that I'm big on sketch noting. And when I started uh, with this whole phone friendly thing, my student, it was all done digital and I kind of lost sight of it. It was my students who kind of brought me back with like, hey, can we like uh, go back to doing some sketch notes and then we, we can put the pictures on Google Classroom. I'm like, you know what, we're gonna do that. And I, I have uh, tutorial videos have to how kids can turn in their work no matter what device they're on. So definitely, that, that that's definitely one, uh, I want to encourage people not to throw out yet with the uh, distance learning is paper and pencil can still work. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the great things that they can do, right, is, is utilize Rocketbook, right? Rocketbook is a great way that they can do handwritten notes and with their phone, 
easily use the Rocketbook app to send it to Google Classroom, to send it to their Google Drive, their Microsoft OneDrive, any of those places, right? And I love that you said, don't throw out the old when you're bringing in the new, because a lot of teachers think like that, or they think others perceive that. And that's not the case. It's layering the technology into the instruction, not replacing the entirety of the instruction, even though right now a lot of teachers kind of seem like they have to replace everything with digital, but they can still do traditional by having them snap pictures, by having them do small little things, but then send it in digitally, right? And that's sometimes that can be the only part of the lesson that's digital is sending it in digitally, correct? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what are some other things that, that, that you have seen teachers uh, w- uh, starting to use phones with, some interesting activities, some innovative ideas to really uh, stoke creation and innovation with students from this $1,000 device that is in the pockets of many of our youngsters? Again, I, I, again, I, I try to keep it as simple as possible because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking from the perspective of a teacher who's afraid of technology. So most of them, that they're semi-familiar with the phone. So that, 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 that's my end. But, you know, just using the, in Google Classroom is my platform. That's kind of my base. And it's just simple ways to get kids checking in. Um, people forget the simplest things can, can make the biggest difference. And um, using, uh, for me, I use the, uh, the Google Classroom question function religiously. That, that, that can be used as a method of, of taking attendance. Uh, as facilitate and take it even further to facilitate academic conversations, kind of the way that you uh, you would use a message board on Blackboard or Canvas, you take in a college class. So um, that's one of my big pushes is use the heck out of that question function. It's very versatile. Uh, your kids can, can attach things to it, but they can have those conversations that you can't have live, but you can have a digital con- conversation all done with their thumbs on their phone. So um, I, I know where I work, uh, academic conversations is a big push. And people were wondering how, how are we going to get them to do that? And I go, well, we can mirror that that uh, message board type deal using Google Classroom question function. No, and, that, and that's really good because students know how to use Google Classroom, or at least if they don't, it can be an easy lift to get them to learn how to use Google Classroom. Um, a lot of teachers, Google Classroom can be like the gateway tech and they're starting to learn how to distribute and accept work. And that question function is built in. And so you can really get some some enter ticket and exit tickets, even if they're not entering or exiting your classroom. And by the way, teachers, don't forget, Google Classroom has an app for the iPhone and for the Android devices. So they're not, they don't have to use their web browser on their phone. And those apps are really interactive. Um, you know, when I actually started using technology in the classroom, I really had to think outside the box. And, and you know, I, I hate using that term because, you know, we're always thinking in, in various ways and new ways to really reach our kids. But I will say this, one of the things that I started uh, to utilize for the very first time to get students involved in instant access information is poll everywhere. I used poll area everywhere embedded into my Google slides, embedded into my Microsoft PowerPoint and, you know, just using their phones. Cause I had zero devices in my classroom. Um, but I was the tech teacher, right? So I had to figure out a way to get technology to work. And I said, you know what? There's so many teachers writing grants for thousands of dollars to get tech in their classroom. And my student named grant has a device in his pocket we can use right now. So we started using Poll Everywhere, which was a really great tool. And then we upgraded to Nearpod for really quick information. And then we upgraded to Flipgrid, which has a really great app that students can create and utilize as well. So those apps have gotten better and better and those phone apps have gotten phenomenal. So I love the mindset, Adam, that you have that don't think of the devices first. Think of the activity you want your students to complete. Think of the learning outcome you want them to have by the end of the lesson. And then you can start looking for that phone tech that can help you reach those goals. Um, what do you think about it like that, Adam? Are, are some of those tools things that you used before? Um, are, are those things that you would recommend for teachers to be utilizing in an asynchronous and synchronous environment? Without a doubt. I mean, those are all things that I have used, um, both phone and with Chromebook. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many. I mean, uh, part of kind of my recipe has been, you know, with Google Classroom is things like the phone apps for Flipgrid, uh, the phone apps for uh, quizzes, for uh, quiz, Quizlet's a big one of mine, too. I do a lot of have to do a lot of vocabulary building. So the Quizlet app 
you know, at the, even before the whole uh, COVID thing was a, a huge part of my part of my strategy there. So the um, yeah, the, the, those are just some of the things that I like to use. And again, I I always harp on the simplicity of it. We, a lot of people get intimidated by all these different tools. Um, I, I use them in the most simplest form, but I, I find ways to try to get the most out of it using those simplest forms. And Adam, we, we can't forget about the tools students are using for fun already as it is, right? Yeah. There is, I mean, if you have older students, seventh grade and up, and you get parent permission to utilize Twitter, start a classroom hashtag, have a hashtag for a check-in for your classroom, have a hashtag for motivation of the day and just say, hey, you know, during the day, you know, search our hashtag and see what we're doing. If you find, like I was a science teacher, if you find science outside, take a picture of it, write why it's science or, or related to what we're learning and hashtag Marquez science. We did that years ago, hashtag Marquez science. Whenever we were doing labs in class, take a picture of the lab, take a picture of the explosion, take a picture of the chemical change and say why it's something and what you learned and hashtag Marquez science. We treated it like a conference. Right, we treated it like the kids treat everything else outside the classroom. Instagram, fantastic place. They can take pictures and post. They can do all those things. Um, what what app um, would you say that students are using now, just in their daily lives, that they can also bring in to the classroom to really engage them if the teacher starts accepting it as well? I mean, for, for me, I have my own children, and they're they're all big on TikTok. Uh, TikTok's a great way to have kids kind of just create their own little, little fun videos as almost like for me as a teacher, I can accept those videos as checking for understanding or as like small mini little projects. And I mean, just to see the, the look on their eyes when they go, we, we get, to, get to do a TikTok. Um, I've used Twitter and Instagram um, in the past. Um, I've used, uh, I've done actually, I've helped teachers um, uh, review for semester finals by doing a Twitter chat. We did a Sunday night Twitter chat the, the week of the, or right before finals week and kids, you know, 30, 40 kids would jump in and every seven minutes I was posting a new question that they had to be, they were preparing for the, for the final. Uh, with uh, Instagram, what I've done over the years, I started this like 2013 when I first learned about Instagram. Um, it was part of their digital uh, grade component, uh, what I had, where every day I, they would have to follow my, uh, my, my, my class Instagram account and they would get credit toward their grade. And I would post things that we learned that day and they had to comment with something that they learned. If someone posted something that they knew that was already posted, they had to post something else. So they had to do some research. So I told me, you're just going to be getting points for your grade by doing what you already know you're doing at home anyways, going on Instagram. So it's just a real simple way to engage kids. And I definitely, I think it's a, a tool that we can uh, really leverage uh, in this distance learning environment. Yeah, you know, I, the power of the hashtag is absolutely real, especially when we are now in this distance learning environment. It is a hashtag, everybody, not a pound sign. Just make sure you know that. So when you tell your kids to hit the pound sign, they don't know what that means. It's the hashtag. Um, you're and, and, and you're right about, about doing those Twitter chats. I mean, we as adults do that, right? To learn something new, we have, you know, California Ed Chat. We have Q Chat. We have CV Tech Talk. All of these great... Twitter chats, we can utilize synchronously and asynchronously to share ideas, right? Why can't we do that with our students? Well, I mean, once again, with district approval, you're getting approval by the district and the parents to utilize these things, but most students are already utilizing them. So why not go to where they are? Why not already go there? And I love all your ideas because when you start posting things with a hashtag for your class and students start following that, they contribute more. They can contribute at a later date. And those are some amazing things that can happen. Um, and you always amaze me, Adam, with everything that you do and, and all the ideas that you have. Um, and, and you and Catherine, once again, um, are, 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 are have a great book coming out that can really push these ideas forward and, and, and showcase to other teachers how they can help uh, bring technology to the forefront in their district. Do you have any idea of when that, when that book is coming out. I know you're putting the finishing touches on it. Is there a, a proposed date for the, the grand unveiling? Um, I want to say that the earliest will be end of September, but probably sometime in October is uh, the target date as of right now. Uh, we're still uh, we're finalizing the actual title. Uh, within the title, I'll give it away a little bit. It's going to be uh, tentatively lead with learning. That's going to be the main title, uh, which pretty much talks about, you know, this is about tech coaching. 
but learning comes first. The tech, the, the tech supports the learning. So the learning's always first. So um, a lot of people may look at the title like, well, what's that got to do with, with tech? The, the, that's not the point. It's the learning and then it, it's how the tech, take, uh, we always say if you plan with the four seasons of mind, the tech, the tech will take care of itself. That's one of our uh, overarching themes. But yeah, to your question, probably sometime October, I think is uh, when it's gonna get launched. Awesome. And I can't, I can't wait for that. I think you and Catherine are two amazing individuals. And by the way, those of you who are watching now and going to be watching later, Adam and Catherine met through Q and yep. they had a Q wedding <laughs> a session yeah, we that you can go to and it's a wedding. So, I mean, th there's, there's no two other couple that embodies what Q can do for you than right. Adam and Catherine. I mean, they, you are the poster uh, couple. And uh, I don't want to say poster child because I don't want to say anything like that. But you are the poster couple uh, for what how technology can bring together people and and uh, and a shared uh, vision. And, and I think you know if if people aren't following you on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, they absolutely need to. So can you tell us where they can get a hold of you uh, or where they can tweet at you or contact you? Yeah, on Twitter and Instagram, it's at Tech Coach Juarez. Um, just tech coach in my last name, J U A R E Z. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, on there a lot. Uh, we have our variety of, uh, of other, uh, Facebook pages and groups. We have our CB hashtag CB tech talk, Facebook group, uh, free to join as well as I have my tech coach. What is uh, actual page? So I'm on all those platforms on a pretty regular basis. Absolutely. And, 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 and if, if you need to get a hold of Adam, all of those are the best places to do it. And he will respond back to you. Don't be a stranger. Um, you know, everybody needs to know that, that we at Q and uh, the members of Q and you, everybody's a member of Q. Um, you need to know that we are here to help. Um, and so whenever somebody says, oh, I, don't, I didn't want to bug you or I don't want to bug, you're never bugging us because our passion is to collaborate. And if your question is going to help us collaborate with you, we want to hear from you. So please definitely contact Adam with any questions. Please definitely uh, look for his book, I hit Catherine and his book when it comes out. And, and definitely follow him on Twitter because he shares amazing nuggets every single day. And once again, Adam, can you tell the, to, tell the group a little bit more about CB Tech Talk, when they can join and, and when what night is, it usually happens? Uh, so CB Tech Talk, it's going to be our fourth anniversary, believe it or not, uh, in uh, September, but it's uh, it's the uh, it's the Twitter head chat for the Central Valley. Um, it's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We do um, we're on Twitter, and then we do the simulcast on Facebook Live. We either bring on a guest, or we're sitting there just bantering, talking about what people are saying on Twitter. So we're it's a uh, a lot of people double dip. They're on Facebook and they're on Twitter at the same time. So it's a uh, it's always a fun time. And that's, that's, that's amazing, you know, and, and, uh, Adam, I, I appreciate you taking the time today to share your phone friendly lesson designs and, and those ideas. And in the chat, we're seeing TikTok blow up. So yeah, I mean, if your students are on TikTok and, and, and your parents say it's okay for them to do that, definitely do that. Kids love when teachers go to where they are. I mean, the, the, the other day we talked to, um, Alex Cross, Eric, Eric Cross, who was a guest on our show last time. And he started showing us how he uses uh, Snapchat in the class. So he brings, he brings out his Snapchat camera. And so when he is on, uh, his live feeds with the students, he brings up the Snapchat camera and says, yes, I'm, I'm here to help you. Right. Or he, he, he brings in, you know, the, the money and go, this lesson is money, baby. This lesson is money. So these are the things that kids know about. These are the things that kids use. And so why not go to where the kids are? Right. We want them to learn. We want them to enjoy learning because one of the things is also before we end is the the uh, the fear that we show up to the Zoom room or the Google Meet or the Microsoft Teams. We show up, but the kids don't. That's one of our fears. So we need to do everything in our power for the kids to say, you know what? That Mr. Juarez is an amazing teacher and he's so funny and he actually makes this learning very educational and it's and it's just a great time. I'm going to show. I'm going to be there every time because I cannot miss uh, Mr. Juarez's classroom. And that's what we need our students to do. So you need to be that teacher. You need to be where the kids are. You need to start engaging them in that way so that they are like, I cannot miss that class. So Adam, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for inspiring everybody else. And I want to end with a quote 
from Nelson Mandela. I always end with this one. And it says, everything seems impossible until it's done. Fall is coming. It may seem daunting. It may seem impossible, but we will get through it because fall may be tough, but teachers are tougher. So thank you, Adam, for being here. Thank you for listening. And don't forget, we have one more Super Share coming at four o'clock. So go ahead and go and, and, and take a break and go get something to eat. And we will see you again here in about 30 minutes. Thank you so much, everybody. And have yourself a wonderful afternoon.